YouTube, we have another week, another set of hot takes. I'm in a cozy onesie, and this is the Twitch chat environment as we wait for season nine. But let's look at the takes you guys left last week. Remember, you can leave your hot takes in the comments here. Just don't write a giant essay. First one from Discord. Hybrid, specifically Overwatch 1 maps, is the worst game mode currently in the game and has all the same issues assaulted. Maybe it's just me, but 90% of hybrid games in Overwatch 1 maps is a steamroll for either side. But Overwatch 2 maps are better suited for 5v5 and see more balance. But I honestly insta leave all Overwatch 1 one hybrid maps at this point since it's not fun time even if we're the winning team that is a scolding hot take i honestly besides wiley whoever typed this message this hot take i don't know a single person that honestly hates hybrid i feel like hybrid i don't know they kind of went all over the place but hybrid generally is a pretty well liked mode i think most people do enjoy uh king's row eichenwald hollywood maybe some of them suck like nimbani or whatever for some people but i enjoy those maps too uh this is no way in shape or form does it have the issues assault did because you clearly never played assault because assault is two capture points this is a single capture point plus an entire payload how in the world is this this have the same issues maybe it, it, you say maybe it's just you because 90 percent of your games on overwatch one maps is a steamroll that's probably just you pretty hot take i don't really know where you're coming from I do think hybrid personally is enjoyable. It's nothing wrong with not liking hybrid, but you know. Hot take, roll passives need to go and every hero should have their own individual passive that suits their playstyle. It would let them stand out even more and would be much easier to balance since you're not affecting 10 other heroes when you're tuning for the one who gets too much benefit from it. Some heroes already have their passive in the game, e.g. Brig Inspire, Kiri Wall Climb, Mercy Self Heal through healing, Sombra Invis, etc. And others could get very creative. Tracer, instant reload on E-Limbs, Reaper, refreshing Wraith on E-Limbs, Ball being impossible to body block, Ryan, no headshot damage while he has armor, just throwing random stuff out there. Honestly, I don't really think this is a hot take. I actually don't mind individual cooler passives. I, I remember, I don't know what generation do they add it for Pokemon. Having like Pokemon passives like change the entire metagame in a cool way. It doesn't really sound that bad if each hero has a unique passive, but balancing it just sounds like a nightmare, right? Didn't they add passives in like Gen 3 or something? And a lot of heroes already do have built-in ones, so it's just a matter of rounding out the, the rest of the uh, the roster. I don't actually think this is uh, too bad of a cook, but you, you, you'd have to sit and iterate for a long time as a balance team to, uh, to figure out what works for each hero, because then if you add a passive, a hero's current power level, that might mean you have to tweak other parts of their kit to make up or to compensate for the passive. But then what's the point of doing that if they're already sort of like balanced in a way, you know? You're just adding an extra ability for the sake of adding them. It would be a nerf to heroes that already have a passive in some capacity of less things to play with, but it doesn't always mean a passive is a good thing. Remember Lifeweaver's passive? They just removed it straight up. Farah already has the levitate ability from Pokemon. Farah should never be able to be shattered by Reinhardt because it's a ground move versus flying. Think about it that way. Hot take, competitive points uh, should be able to be exchanged for premium credits, maybe 500p for 100c. A currency conversion isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the problem is currently as it stands, you earn competitive points even for taking a loss. So you just end up people having like competitive farms where they just convert for real credits to buy skins and sell. It, it kind of creates a pretty underground black market ecosystem if that's the case. That's like something you'd do if you really need people to queue into competitive because no one's playing it. You need an incentive, but you currently don't. I don't really think this is necessary at all. Hot take, Ball and Doomfist not being that good is perfectly okay because they're on a super slippery slope of being too good and being oppressive with the high mobility. Actually, I think Doomfist is pretty good right now. Ball, maybe not so much in this current era, but I actually think Doom is pretty solid, despite what all the Doomfist mains will tell you. They're better than average, that's for sure. Doom is insane in the right hands, and I think he performs way better than Ball, and he's actually very popular too. It's not like you don't see Doomfist at all. If anything, some of you guys probably queue in a rank and see too many Doomfists. They are the slippery slope of being too, like high skill ceiling characters with high mobility can be a little annoying to deal with, but like, I think it's fun for the players. It's not fun getting like getting punished with like really, really good movement, but also have like a gazillion tools to get in and out. Then it just becomes like fun for only the Doom and miserable for everybody else. But I think Doom is on a slope where like he's still relatively fun for Doom players. I think the, the complaints for Doom players is that they played Overwatch 1 Doom and they constantly can't 
uncompare it in their head. So they'll always feel like Doom is not fun or bad because they keep remembering old, old Overwatch 1 Doom. But I think if we have a player who's a Doom main who only started in Overwatch 2 and doesn't have the, the psychological comparison that they can't help, they might actually consider the hero pretty good, but... I don't know, that's just my armchair psychology on why Doomfist players complain a lot. Supports should be the best duelists in the game. If a support is taking the time to engage in a duel, then they are neglecting their responsibility to the team, unlike the DPS they are dueling. I love how this was screenshotted with three question mark reacts underneath on Discord. So you're telling me a support hero should be also the best duelist in the game. Might as well make them the best tank in the game too. Overwatch 1 Brig. Best duelist, best tank, best support. Heal so much, can outswing a Rhine and survive and duel anybody in a 1v1. Fuck it. Average support player brain. And I am a support player, but come on. Support players, you're not doing you're not doing us support players any justice when you come up with takes like this. I think changes like self-heal passive and other recent changes are just the devs coming to terms with Overwatch no longer being a competitive team game. Most of the player base is casual players who pick the game up randomly, play a couple of matches, and leave for the night. Literally no one has played comp in so long. Even most streamers are now quick play warriors. The game may not necessarily function better this way, but it's just reacting to the actual player base that is here and making improvements to them. The Overwatch League died for a reason. This game is no longer a competitive team shooter. It's a casual role play, role based FPS. The devs have come to terms with that and the community needs to also. Yeah, I was about to say this was five days ago. There's a brand new rank system to kind of promote a new higher echelon of competitive play, a whole new champion rank. That's the name of the rank. I don't think this is them coming to terms with it. If anything, this is them coming to realize that they're, they made a mistake or not made a mistake. Well, maybe they kind of did, but they're at least trying to fix shit that stinks and you're not wrong where the, a lot of the player base is probably swapping to quick play myself included but like i mean only they have the data on who truly queues uh what what the player population is in the queues 2018 jeff kaplan did release like public information on where the the role distribution is or the queue distribution and like half the players do play competitive but the other half are a mix between arcade custom games don't quote me on that, but if half the players play comp, that is actually quite a bit. So you can't really say that it's truly a uh, non-competitive game. To be, to be fair, that was also five, six years ago. And I think the sentiment is actually mostly shared by the people who are like looking for this kind of content. You know, like when you, when you look at statistics and data, selection of the group also affects the data. And if you're asking people who are actively posting about Overwatch and blah, 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 that means they're like above the casual level. Cause there's truly, there truly are really, really, really casual people that probably do play quick play. But like, I mean, I still play ranked, Emong plays ranked. I still see people coming in here being like, I'm gold, I'm trying to go promote. And you know, there's like Jet in our chat that played like 500 games this season as Reinhardt, like an absolute maniac. They are coming up with new, uh, the new system in like six days. So I don't think this is a, uh, them coming to terms with it no longer being a comp game at all. Don't agree with that take. Ryan should be able to put his shield up while charging with the trade off that he can't pin anybody while doing so. Mauga already kick it CC to while charging, but why not? Ryan putting up his shield while charging. So a frontal shield while charging in. But the thing with like Mauga can't get CC'd, but like you can't take damage on a charge, which it's a free engage tool. That kind of make, although you can't pin anybody, that's an insanely good gap closer, to be honest with you. No, I don't think so. That just complicates him a bit more. It's going to be frustrating where you like let go of you. Your shield is up and you're just doing the charge for the close distance. This just sounds weird. If anything, why why shield? You should allow him to pin. You can maybe give him like a little bit of damage reduction while he while he charges, maybe. But like borderline, Ryan is like borderline pretty okay. It just depends on like what the enemy team picks. Maybe DPS should get like a 25 HP health burst upon an elimination. That just kind of contributes more to the healing creep thing. When you're dueling someone, imagine you're dueling a uh, like a like a hero that just happens to have a random bullet across, like touch a tank, and while you're in a 1v1, you get a free elim because you tagged somebody in the distance that got killed, then all of a sudden you get a HP burst in a 1v1. That is gonna be so frustrating for some people. Just like a random chunk of heal that you can't like buy stroke of luck. 
because the hero you played has like some random weapon or like imagine you want to be wanting a junk rat and he fired a couple of nades in the distance before and it hit somebody boom and the junk rat all of a sudden heals I, I don't know hot take may should have been the overwatch 2 character that swapped to tank instead of doomfist or both her whole kit screams tank her freeze beam and wall outer make space her ice block is a tank cooldown her alt is even about clearing space like divas if i'm wrong please tell me why yo not a hot take i actually play a decent amount of heroes of the storm I, i'm like level like 150 in that game so i put in like 100 hours in that game and i actually enjoy may as a tank so in that game for those who've never played heroes of the storm is that uh she has a snowball ability she can throw a snowball that like blinds you or something she can also like slide on the her ice and then her, one of her ultimates i know is like a, a big snowball so you hit one target and then a big snowball rolls i actually do think there's an idea of making in, in, into a tank there's some there's some ways to iterate off that and i actually think it would be really cool as well you can also save those kind of hero uh ability concepts and shove them onto another hero it might fix may because i mean may is really annoying with the wall and if it's just the tank role having it eh, you know what like i said i don't really think this is a hot take I, I i think you can cook with this a little bit slightly toasty take i personally believe ball needs to have a new way to engage other than rolling around grapple and slamming in possibly introduce a new ability in ball form where while he's grounded and rework some of the numbers he currently has to help with the offensive strategy he has perhaps he rolls in place like a wind up like sonic the hedgehog okay i was gonna say no at first when you mentioned like he kind of like charges up like a, a wind up and then goes super speed that actually sounds kind of cool on paper like you had me in the first half and i'm like nah i actually think like his identity is really cool with like the grapple and everything but you had me at sonic i love sonic Sonic Heroes. It's basically a Rhine charge, but like, you know, like the and you just sit in the spot and then you go a little bit quicker and then you can ping pong off a wall. I don't hate it. It's like a, like a bowling ball ability. Hot take. Tanks contribute more to the perceived healing problem in the game than people realize. Orisa, Ryan, and Winston are the only tanks who do not have the capability to increase their health alone. Orisa's Fortify gives her over health. Her ultimate gives her over health. Winston's Primal grants him 1,000 HP. Ryan, okay, not Ryan, but like those two have a have a health increasing ability. I'm uh, I'm a little confused at where you're going with this one, so. Hot take. Hot take. I have almost 1,000 hours of Cass, and I don't think he's that bad. He just needs the mildest tune-up of all time. Cap his minimum damage at the end of his fall-off range so that he can still 3x headshot squishies and make his magnate a little faster after it acquires a target, and suddenly he's completely fine. So Cassidy's role, he basically shoots like a wet noodle at medium to long ranges because they actually... I think the identity they wanted to give him is like a close range combat fighter, which is why he had the 225 HP and the fact that when he combat rolls, he has 75% damage reduction. And when he pops high noon, he's like 40% damage reduction. He's supposed to be tanky up close. And he's like an anti ball and anti doomfist kind of thing. This also goes into the old Overwatch 1 doomfist comparison. People always compare it to old Cass where he was like an actual pretty good medium to long range sniper. But then that caused problems for any of the flying heroes like Echo and uh, and Pharah were just running into problems when a cast could just do full damage without having to scope in no penalty. For an Ash to shoot the Pharah, she has to scope in to do reasonable damage. And if you're scoped in as an Ash, you're slower as a byproduct, which gives you a weakness or a drawback to that. But if Cass is able to do full damage at long range, it's too good. So he's kind of like sniper cast, not my favorite. So his identity now is the close range. And if you're always comparing it to the old one, he's going to feel like crap. But I actually agree. I don't actually think he's that bad, but he's definitely not a one size fits all DPS like he used to be, which is a shame if you've mained him for a long time. But that's the identity that it seems like they've gone with. I will say Hinder just feels still like a cheesy, crappy ability that I don't think they need, to be honest with you. The old Magnate was cheesier with all the damage it did. Hinder is also just equally annoying to play, but the reason why I believe they wanted to add that is to fulfill that niche again to help counteract the trace, like the high mobility flankers. If they're keeping the identity of it, that's kind of, I see where they're going with it, but I do think you can completely scrap the nade and give him something else and kind of refill, rework his niche. This has 900 likes on Twitter. Lucio alt is trash and I'm tired of pretending it isn't. Long ass ultimate charge time, have to do a tech to get reasonably reasonable cast time all for a two second bit of shield. I'd actually rather have immortality or Suzu any day of the week. Why does this have so many likes? It's the Lucio mafia that thinks beat is bad probably comparatively speaking lucio's ultimate i guess over time a little less impactful compared to some other abilities that were introduced to the game like suzu like lamp for example 
but it isn't bad. It's still a really good tempo ultimate. You can still counter a lot of things. A good well-timed beat can absolutely turn team fights around. Lucio's ult is trash because you have bad beats. Like you're just beating off at the wrong times. It is also a little hard. Like it is a long ultimate to build. If uh, also if you're staying on speed, which is why you know they always encourage like you know the, the speed the speed version of him to be really good in brawl, which does mean as a byproduct you build your beat a little bit slower. But if you give it any like less ult charge to build, then it honestly becomes too strong. Actually, arguably, you could cut the ult, uh, the cost to build it up, but like give the over health or over shield, give it way less over health or over shield. Like an instant 300 over health that decays a little bit quicker versus like, how much do you get on beat? Isn't it like 800? Cut, cut, the, ca cut the cost to build so you can promote more speed play, but like make it less thing and having like 300 instant over health can be if you time it right can also be like very game changing as well you know i sort of see it but you could also just i mean lucio himself is like at a place where i personally think he's pretty he's balanced and he's good where he is he can absolutely be a demon he's got great movement the only one who can wall ride it's a very unique hero you can absolutely go assassinate people or play really speedy and strategic with your team i think his play style is versatile enough that like he doesn't really need much tuning right now um, he's not like core in any, you know, every single build or every single comp except Brawl, I guess. But like, it's not like if I don't have a Lucio on my team and ranked, it's game over. But, you know, I think he's good. I think maybe the argument is that a fun little change is if you drop the beat and you land on somebody, you do a little bit of damage or something. Last hot take of the video is it's not that tanks should be raid bosses, but they should mostly shrug off all CC. They already have a boop resistance and faster sleep recovery. All CC should be at least half as effective against tanks. This will make it more appealing to use CC on non-tank targets while still leaving some value for CC on the tank, like sleeping or stun uh, blocking doom or charging run. I wouldn't say half, but yeah, like a 30%. So right now tank passive is what? 30% knockback resistance. And I think, isn't it 30% less ultimate charge gained when you heal them? or deal damage to tanks so they're not ultimate batteries for both teams to kind of promote less ultimate stuff. So I actually agree. They made like, you know, Anna CC specifically do less time on sleep. You could just make all stuns just be a little bit like a percentage less, 30% less. So like a, a Brig stun right now is what? One second? I actually don't even know the number of this. It could just be 0.75, 25% less or 0.7 seconds. A diminishing returns on tanks is not a bad thing. I think they do it in League as well. With like, I remember Merc Treads. I don't, I haven't played League in a while. Well, I played it last week, but I don't remember the exact item. Or Mercury Treads is really good. But just tenacity, is that what they used to call it? Stuff like that. I don't disagree with this. I do think, um, not so that the CC is completely ineffective, but like a reduced amount is okay with me. I'm okay with this take. And I think that's it for the hot takes of the week. Remember to leave more in the comments, and I'll see you next week for season nine.